Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about cream blushes on the high street. I've already bent my arm in, so it's it's going to get messy. But I have, how many have I got? Seven, four, five, six, seven, counting on my fingers, to share with you today. Um... None are really misses, but I'm going to kind of go through the best and the worst of the ones that I have. I'm going to start with the more kind of dry, moussey, cream type textures, and then we're going to go on to the more liquidy ones. Uh, and I think we'll probably kick off with the NYX Sweet Cheeks, which is one of the newer ones for me. I picked up this colour specifically because it screamed autumn, but also because I wanted to see how similar it was to their lip mousse type products. And I think it's really, really similar. If you saw my swatches in my haul, um, it's really, it, it's like a moussey type product. Already, it, it looks like a lip product. It's not, it's a cheap product. Um, it, it's nice. It like, it blends really, really nicely. However, I pulled out these two products also from NYX. This is the Soft Matte Lip Cream, and this is their Powder Puff, both of which are lip products. And the Powder Puff is a little more moussey, but it's still kind of a cream to powder, would work really, really well as a blush. And the lip cream, they're all really, really similar textures. Something I hadn't really thought about, but of course it's the classic, you can use your lipstick as a cream blush, of course you can. But especially with these newer kind of moussey ones, it does seem like a repackaged product that's already available. The color I have in Sweet Cheeks is Bombshell, and I have to say, all that aside, um, it's the one that lasted the longest. I actually don't have any photos of this freshly on my face, irritatingly. Um, but I do have, because I was wearing it when I was doing a foundation test, I do have an end of the day, and the foundation wasn't wearing fantastically, but you can still see the blush, and that is very, very rare for me. I mean, I don't wear super dark colours anyway, so that already had a little bit of a boost in its favour because it was a deeper colour. But I do think these kind of moussier, more dry textures stay on the skin a little bit longer. It was quite easy to blend. The only problem is, I would just say, you need a very, very light hand because it packs a real punch in terms of pigment. You, you just need the very, very smallest amount to build it up a little bit. And because you have to work quickly because it's going to set because it's a cream to powder, I do think that depending on what foundation you're wearing underneath, it could shift it a little bit because you don't, you can't really be very light, you've got to really blend it in and that may be an issue. The next one is the Dream Matte Blush. This color is, what color is this? Creamy Cheek Tint in Koi Coral. Again, this is one of those products that you have to really blend it in. I would say, unless you're using this over the top of like a tinted moisturizer, and I'm applying everything here over quite light foundation, so it's not the end of the world if they kind of shift a little bit. But if you're wearing it over the top of something heavy, I would definitely recommend you applying this with a sponge. I'd go straight into the product with this pot, and with the Sweet Cheeks, I'd probably put it on the back of my hand, just like smudge it out a little bit, and then lift it and put it on, because otherwise you are gonna just move around your foundation and mess the whole thing up. On a different note with this one from Maybelline, it doesn't pack much of a punch in terms of pigment. Now I do only have this pale colour, which is not a great representation because it is, you know, it's a coral. But it, you know, comparing it to the other corals that I've got, it's just not very much. So again, I think I would probably reach for this on my tinted moisturiser, just wanting to do a little bit of something without powdering kind of days. Moving on, this is definitely a favourite. This is the Collection Speedy Blush. And I've talked about this before. It's like a twist up not a pencil, but like a crayon type. It says it's mistake-proof cheek colour, and I would say you've got a little bit more time to work with this one. The colour that I've got is O2, and depending on what foundation I'm wearing, I will put this directly onto my cheeks and kind of blend it out with my fingers. Or, again, if I'm wearing something heavier as a base, then I'll go with a brush and do like this, and then kind of stipple it and blend it a little bit more and be a little lighter. Lastly, in this category, I'm gonna to need to buy more of these because again, this is a very, very pale one, but I've talked about this tons because it's got this special quality to it in terms of um, shade. So I don't know what the shade range is. This is a Korean brand. It's called the Sugar Ball Cushion Cheek Color. I'm not sure which one this is. I'm looking for like, an... oh, number three. It's number three. You can see in this watch, it's not much of anything. But there's something about this that gives that kind of lip from within. It's like, it reminds me a lot of the NARS sex appeal. It's the palest, softest, warm pink, but it just kind of adds a glow. As cream, especially pale cheek colours go, that is pretty long wearing. I'll see if I can find links for everything. Um, but if I can't, 
it may be just like information because that's one of those things that sometimes I can find in, sometimes I can't. I'm wearing these away and you can see this one, which is the Sweet Cheeks, is the one that wants to stay the most. And these haven't been on my arm for very long. Also, these cookies from W7, I know you can get different versions of these, um, but it's a makeup removal cloth. Even if you only use it for like makeup that you've put on your hands and stuff like that, if you're like blending something. These are amazing. Spritz it with water and it's gone. I feel weird about using those products on my face because I feel like they're going to be over exfoliating. I once used a magic eraser. Is that what they were called? No, they weren't called magic erasers. That's a household cleaning product. Was it called a makeup eraser? It was something like that. Anyway, the little pink cloths. And I had such a bad reaction. My entire face was like a burn. So it just makes me nervous. But you know, for swatches. Moving on to liquids. Um, and these are probably my most used, especially over the summertime. I've really enjoyed these. I'm gonna start with the one that I definitely thought was a fail originally. The issue with this is it says Cheeky Sheer Gel Cream Blush. And I was really excited about it. Again, this is gonna totally depend on what you want to apply this over the top of. I don't think this is a cream blush that's made for a heavy foundation. This is like a summer color sheer wash of something and I bought this in the winter time and I was just like oh I hate this it just doesn't blend nicely it's weird and it is a really really strange texture unlike anything else it's like look at this that's just dropped on the table I just kind of got it at home and thought what is this this is difficult to work with it's patchy it's strange but if you just use a small amount of it and kind of like blend it out nicely I know it's looking horrible on my hand and you can see where I'm coming from it was just a disappointment but it is just kind of like a wash of colour. And it does blend quite nicely when it's done properly, but it's quite liquidy, almost like a water gel. And so, as I said, I just don't think that this would work over the top of something heavy because as soon as you put this on, you're gonna be kind of like wiping away. There's definitely a time and a place for this, but it's not necessarily gonna be this upcoming season. That said, I would really, really like to hear from those of you who have enjoyed this. Um, especially deeper colours, and you like this applied in a completely different way. Maybe you apply it with a sponge, maybe it's like a totally different animal. Let me know. Another new one for me is this one from Flower Beauty. Will it ever focus? Yes, it will. And it's called, is it called the Blush Bomb? Yes, it is. Um, this says Colour Drops, which was really what appealed to me. Colour Drops for Cheeks. And the colour that I have is Nectar. Did I tell you? I didn't. The colour that I had in the Cheek Heat was Coral Ember. Coral is definitely a theme for me. Um, so yeah, Nectar is the one I got from Flower Bomb. I've been wanting to try this one for ages, but for me it was quite expensive for Superdrug and I found it on like a three for two sale or something and felt a little bit better about it. This again, you only need a very small amount of, you see, that's too much. Um, <laughs> a very, very small amount, which is difficult to get. And so straight onto the hand because then you can make sure that you only pick up as much as you actually want. Um, but that is really, really gorgeous to blend. This, I found, went over other foundations really, really nicely, and it lasted really well. That's become a firm favourite, and now I know how nice it is, I probably would be prepared to pay full price. Lastly, we have my current favourite, the one I'm wearing today, although my makeup looks a little bit patchy, and I think it's the... the um, I've worn this highlight from Beauty UK. Um, it's a baked baked blush really so I suppose it's not a highlight but I kind of just topped it up a little bit and I think in certain lights it looks okay and in others a little bit muddy so please don't judge this by my current face because I really am a fan I have been using this tons this kind of does the job of a blusher and a bronzer it's the Glossier Cloud Paint in Dusk um, I've just come to rediscover the cloud paints and really enjoy them, but this particular colour I think works really well, especially for this time of year. So, I mean, already, again, it's got that kind of like peachy that clearly I enjoy. Um, but it's got, it's kind of a warmth, it's not too blushery. I mean, it's a bit orange, I suppose, uh, but it's not too blushery. And so I take this kind of all here just to warm up that whole area and then nothing else. No no other bronzers, no other anything. And it's a really quick way of giving my face a little bit of dimension. I'm not gonna do contouring and all of that jazz, but if I'm just gonna do foundation, some cream blush, some mascara, which is most of the days, this works really, really well to give me kind of like, just a little bit of, I suppose it's like contouring, like some dimension to my face and not just a little pop of blush on my cheeks as I usually do. Something noisy is happening over the road, I think. They're collecting a skip. No ideal timing. With the Glossier though, I would say um, not quite 
as long wearing on me as some of the others. Lastly, let's talk a little bit about application and setting. So um, in each of the clips that I've shown you of the ones that I have, apologies for the ones that I didn't have clips for, um, but in each of the clips that I've shown you, I didn't powder or anything. This is literally just foundation, blush on top, that's it. And then I didn't actually powder on top because I was wearing various products and I was testing some things out while I was filming these videos. However, each of them will benefit from um, a little powder to set. Now, there's a very low flying plane. My window is closed. I thought my window was open. What on earth? Anyway, okay, so, distractions. Um, a couple of people asked me on Instagram when I asked what you wanted to know about cream blushes that I would review uh, about pores. Now I just want to share with you how I powder because I don't like to use a lot of powder on my face. If I'm going to powder, I powder in specific areas and one of those areas is because I don't like the really visible pores that I get here. So none of these products I would say um, particularly settle into pores or make pores more obvious that would very much depend on what your base was. So if you were going in with like a matte base, if you were using something that you thought was totally flawless, you may feel more like that because the products that I use for base are quite lightweight and don't tend to be kind of blurring. I can't really give you that information because I'm using it on top of something that's light anyway. So kind of, I'm looking just, it's almost as if I'm using it on top of just skin. So what I do to um, disguise my pores after I've done absolutely everything, including my blush, is just a little bit of powder here. I don't powder everywhere. And so, you know, it is what it is in terms of longevity. I like to test things as they are, like with no help, because I'm not gonna powder my entire face. And so I wanna know how it's gonna last if I don't wanna powder my entire face, or if I don't wanna wear a setting powder. And not all of these products do last that well. Some of them last better than others. I would definitely say that the flower is probably the best for the liquid the sweet cheeks for the kind of moussey type product, and then the sugar ball cushion if you want something that's more of a solid cream. So in terms of kind of disguising pores and disguising fine lines and stuff, I don't do anything around here at all. I just do this area, either side of my nose, because I think a loose powder disguises that quite well. I do here, because I have a line in the middle of my forehead. Have you ever noticed that? It looks like perhaps I was abducted by aliens and they cracked open my head and it just never healed properly. But I mostly do it for this little line I have, my my anger line. And sometimes my chin, but I try to avoid that little bit there because everything settles in that little crease. Not really relevant to the video, but I thought I would share. Back to application. These kind of brushes are my favorite if I'm gonna use a brush. So this is the um, Expert Face Brush from Real Techniques. Again, I'll take it directly into a cream or maybe off the back of my hand, or maybe I'll put it onto my face a little bit rosy it around a little bit with my fingers just to make sure it's kind of evenly applied and then I just like blend it all out. That's one of my favourites. I also have this one which is the Putty Primer Applicator from e.l.f. Also I can't believe I don't have one of the putty blushes yet from e.l.f. I'm working on it. I haven't seen one in store in a colour that I actually like and I want to see them because often I buy them online and I'm like that is never a colour that I would ever have bought if I'd seen it in person. But my absolute favorite way to apply the liquids is I take a very small amount, as a small of an amount as I can get out of the tube, just pat it between my fingers. I know I feel like I'm teaching you to suck eggs, but I really wanna be as thorough as possible. Um, and then just blend it out again as well as possible to get it as evenly as I can. Then I use a dry sponge and go around to blend it into place. So there's no kind of harsh edges. I don't feel like I'm moving my, my face makeup around too much. I'm just kind of placing it where I want it to be. Then I'm blending out the edges and then I'll go back on and kind of blend the actual product. That is my favorite way to apply a liquid blush. And that is it. Hopefully this was useful because I just didn't know how much information you guys would want about these products. I thought mostly swatches, a little bit about longevity and how they apply. Um, I'm not expecting very much in terms of like long wearing from these kind of products. Someone asked about what they would wear for their wedding or like whether or not there's any that I would recommend wearing for a wedding. If that were to be the case, then I would probably use one of these, let's say purely because I'm really enjoying it at the moment, the flower blush bomb. I would apply a little of it, do what I said with the sponge and then powder, do all of the things. Then I would layer it up with um, personally the NARS sex appeal. I know it's budget beauty month, but I have never found, and I have tried, I have swatched, I've taken it into boots and tried my hardest to find something that is similar and I cannot. 
find a dupe. And if I had to recommend a blush for a bride, that would be the one. On a lot of skin tones as well. Google it, seriously, it's like magic. A couple of people also asked me about like downy hair on the face. Um, I don't think any of these would make it look worse. Again, that's all gonna come down to whether or not you set it with powder. And obviously the moussier ones, the ones that are kind of cream to powder may be a little bit more obvious. None of these I would say um, are gonna kind of like settle or cling because obviously I take it up here a little bit and I mean maybe a tiny bit, um, but you'd just be a little bit more sparing and I would go more for the very, very liquidy ones. Probably the cheek heat um, and maybe the one from Flower would be my favorites if you had kind of a lot of hair here that you were worried about. If you do have any questions that you think I can answer, mm, mm, that's difficult, but if you think I can, then please leave me a comment and I will try. Obviously you can DM me on Instagram, that's the best way to directly contact me. Um, and otherwise, thank you for watching. I'll be back on Friday with another foundation review and then hopefully on Sunday with something skincare. Bye.